Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi, and today we're gonna to take a look at the new shades of the Lisa Eldridge lip glosses. So I picked up all eight of the shades and we have a new finish here, and I cannot wait to get into these. So let's start off with some arm swatches. So we have two new sparkle lip glosses. This is the new finish from Lisa Eldridge. This first one here is called Dancing Rose. So these are a translucent shine with a subtle pearl. There's no colored pigment. So you just have some sparkle here. And in this case, you can see it's kind of like a little bit of, there's pink and a touch of gold. It's not truly a rose gold. It's not quite as gold as that, but there's definitely some pink. I can see a little bit of like an opalescent white kind of shimmer in there as well. So that is Dancing Rose. And then we also have Silent Sun. And this is gonna be a little bit more golden here. And we're putting these on my hand because I do wanna separate these by finish. I'm gonna compare these with the new Clay de Poe uh, sparkle finish as well. So you can see here, Silent Sun, again, it's translucent, no pigment. You have a little soft touch of gold shimmer. Now I do wanna be clear that this gold shimmer is not going to be super yellow or super warm. It's gonna be a pale gold and just add a touch of sparkle. So uh, just something to note there, it's not like super gold. Next, we're gonna take a look at the next finish here. These are called the Light Natural Pigment Level. So these are gonna be your lighter lip glosses, not quite as pigmented as the uh, medium impactful. This first shade here is going to be Blush Lightly. And you can see that it's a really beautiful, kind of like a medium neutral rose. So this is actually gonna be a pretty neutral lip gloss shade. And I don't know, this is probably going to be my most used shade from this new set of colors. Next we have Rain. And this is going to be a warmer pink shade. You can see there's a touch of peach in here. So this is gonna be like your peachy pink. We have Pompadour, which is going to be your cooler pink. And let's just do that. Let me do that over again. That didn't swatch super well. And it is actually really challenging to swatch lip glosses. Uh, but there you go, Pompadour, you can see it's a little bit cooler. There's a little red in here, but I would not call this a cool pink still. It's cooler than rain. It's not quite as cool as Blush Lightly, which has a little bit more mauve in it, but it's a cooler warm tone pink. It's still what I would consider a warm tone though. When we're talking about cool versus warm tone, we're looking at how much like yellow's in there, how much blue's in there. Something with more of a stronger blue base is gonna be more cooler in tone. Something with a stronger yellow or orange base is gonna be warmer. And I can definitely see more peach in here than I can with the bluer tones. Then we have Sorcery. And I have to say, this is another one of my favorites from this line here. Look at this, it's like the perfect, soft, subtle, like nude brown. And there's a faint hint of like a little touch of purple in there. So this, it's actually gonna be a neutral brown, but it leans a little bit cool. It's not quite a cool brown, but it's closer to cool than warm. And it's just, it's beautiful. This is like one of those great shades you can just throw in your purse and, you know, use any time. Next up, we're looking at the medium impactful pigment level. And we have Carnival, another favorite this time here. I'm just leaving some space so we can swatch some of the previous colors. You can see this is gonna be your bright fuchsia pink. This is cool tone. You can see you have a little bit of a blue tone to it. So here is Carnival. And I have to say, I really like this. I think this is great for spring and summer, really beautiful. Next up, we have Decade and Another favorite. This is on my lips right now. You can see that you can build this up to a very, very deep brown. Um, but what I did for my lips right now, and let's get a little bit more on here. What I have is I put it on very, very sheerly. I blotted it off and just used the tiniest bit of pigment. And then I topped it with the Dancing Rose. So I have a mix of the two glosses on. But you can see when you shear this out, 
You get a little bit more red, a little purple in there. It's actually a very complex color. So uh, Decade actually will be a cooler cocoa brown with a little bit of purple in there. So these are the eight new shades. Let's go ahead and take a look at the lip swatches while we talk about the details. And then we'll come back and do some comparisons. So let's take a quick look at the actual applicator here. You can see that the lip glosses, you know, they're kind of a short lip gloss, so you don't have a super long wand, and you have kind of this bulbous end here, which really helps you kind of spread out your lip gloss. And you can use the side to, you know, remove some excess. And there is a tip to help line your lips. So it's a nice wand. Um, you know, I think it is not the easiest to get a very small amount of gloss on it. I think there are some wands that are a little bit easier to do that with. This one's a little bit large for that, but it just dis disperses the product very nicely and it's a very effective wand for a lip gloss. However, my absolute favorite lip gloss wand shape is that of the Clay de Poe lip glosses. So if you haven't tried those, check them out because they are, in my opinion, hands down, the best applicator on the market. Now the Lisa Eldridge lip glosses have a three year shelf life. They're made in Italy and we have 4.5 milliliters of product. They retail for 25 US dollars. So I find this to be a very affordable uh, lip gloss. They're cruelty free, fragrance free. They're vegan. At least all of the shades that I checked here were vegan. And you know, I think it's really difficult to find fragrance free lip glosses, which is honestly one of the main reasons I love these lip glosses. I get annoyed by the, you know, all of the vanilla scented or highly fragranced lip glosses at times. I still like some of them. Some of them are a little too strong for me. Um, but overall, you know, it's really nice, especially when it's hot outside, to find something fragrance free, in my opinion. And I do know that there are people out there looking particularly for fragrance free products. So I think this is a really great lip gloss that fits in that category. According to Lisa Eldridge, these are a smooth, non-sticky veil of color, replenishing lips with nourishing oils and butters. And some of the butters that they're including in oils are the wild mango kernel butter, the acai berry oil, sunflower seed oil, and vitamin E oil. And we know that vitamin E is an antioxidant, which is always great as well. So I agree with the statement. These are not a sticky lip gloss. They are very smooth. They're emollient. You can feel the mix of butters and oils on your lips. So it's not going to be as thin as a lip oil, but it's still going to have like a medium weight to it. So it's not going to be a very thin uh, lip gloss per se. Obviously you can put on less to get a thinner layer and so forth. But if you want that high shine from the gloss, then it's still, it's a, a medium weight. And, you know, I find it to be a very comfortable lip gloss. I really enjoy using these and I think they're a really great option. Now, just like other lip glosses on the market, we're looking at an average wear time here of two to three hours. And these lip glosses, they are smooth, they're emollient, and they can definitely kind of bleed out or feather. Uh, into the surrounding lip area. So you may need to use a lip pencil with these. So definitely keep that in mind. I think they're a very comfortable lip gloss and there are actually very, very few lip glosses that do not migrate. So this is definitely a typical quality of lip gloss. So I have to say, I do really like all of the new shades that she has introduced into this lip gloss line. I think they really complement the other shades well and fill in some gaps, at least for me. Now I do have all of the 21 shades of the Lisa Eldridge lip gloss, the gloss embrace. So let's go ahead and do some comparisons with those. And then we'll also talk about the new Clay de Poe lip glosses as well. Well, they're not lip glosses. They're actually the lip shines in the sparkle formula. So first let's go ahead and take a look at the other Lisa Eldridge shades. So as I mentioned, out of the two new shades, these are the only two in the sparkle finish that we have. That's the Dancing Rose and the Silent Sun. And I personally, between the two of them, I think Dancing Rose is really special, really unique, because it's got a little bit of that pink multicolor sparkle in there, which kind of sets it apart. So let's take a look at the light pigmentation level glosses. This one here is Muse 
which this is my favorite of her velvet lipsticks. We're going to put Muse right here so we can kind of see how that compares there to um, this one here was Blush Lightly. And you can see that Muse is going to be a little bit warmer. There's a little bit of like orange in here. I do find the gloss to be a little bit warmer than the lipstick in Muse personally. And you can see it's kind of got like a little bit more like of a warm reddish brownish vibe to that in comparison. This one here is blush. So we definitely have to take a look at blush compared to blush lightly. We're gonna do all of these other shades, you know, kind of vertically so we can see. I don't wanna like smear it into blush lightly, but you can see here that blush is gonna be a deeper version and it is also ever so slightly warmer than blush lightly. Blush lightly has a bit more rose in it compared to blush, which has a bit more red and that red is gonna be a little bit of a warmer red. There's a little orange in there. Next, let's look at Go Lightly. And this is really a pretty peachy shade here. So let's put this one right here near Rain because Rain is gonna be kind of our warm, peachier shade. But you can see that Go Lightly is definitely gonna be brighter. There's a bit more, almost like a neon orange in there. And it's just gonna be brighter and it's not necessarily warmer, um, but it's just a different warm tone in there. So whereas Rain is going to be your warm peachy pink, this is essentially like a soft neon clementine orange. This one here is Beauty. And this is a really beautiful, cool rose shade. And you can see it's definitely going to be cooler in tone than either um, Blush Lightly or than Pompadour. And it's a really beautiful, cool tone rose. And you can see in comparison, Blush Lightly is gonna be kind of a dustier neutral rose instead. I think they're both great options. This is one of my favorites. This one here is Charm. We're gonna put that one right down here and you can see it's gonna be a soft pink. This one is going to be a pretty neutral pink. There is a little bit of uh, peach in there, but it's definitely not enough to consider it a warm shade. Uh, so it's a pretty neutral kind of bubblegum pink. This one here is Petal. And you can see, again, we're looking at kind of a peachy pink here, but this is going to have a cooler tone pink while you still have that warm peach in there. So overall, it's gonna be cooler than rain. And it's really, it's a really nice shade. This one is, you know, it's neutral leaning warm. And this one's Petal. Next, we have Songbird. And this is a really beautiful, soft, dusty peach. And you can see how that compares here to Rain. Rain's definitely gonna have a bit more warm, a little bit more of a warm salmon pink in there, whereas this is more of a true dusty peach. Next up, we have Affair. And you can see that Affair is kind of this warm brown. There's a little bit of orange in here, like almost like a soft terracotta. And this, let's go ahead and put this next to rain as well, just so we can kind of see those together. You can see how much more brown, like you got, kind of got that golden reddish brown in this one here in Affair than you do in rain, which is definitely more pink. And next up we have Delilah. And Delilah actually has some shimmer in here, but it is not in the shimmer category. We're gonna put Delilah right here. It's kind of like this bright, cool tone pink. I'm gonna actually put a little bit of that, let's extend that a little bit more. So you can see that this one actually has a bit, it's like a cool pink with a touch of lavender in it. And that shimmer in there is really beautiful. So I think this is a really great shade, but you can see here that Carnival is much more pigmented than Delilah. It's also more fuchsia. <laughs> Obviously the colors are different, but you can see looking at these two shades, the difference between the light medium, <laughs> the light pigment level versus the medium pigment level. Next, we're moving on to the medium impactful pigment level. And we're gonna take a look here at Dragon, which is kind of your uh, burnt orange shade here. So obviously doesn't go with any of these shades, but it's a really beautiful shade. I think it's great for fall. Next, we have Cinnabar, which is 
a, more of a deep terracotta mixed with a little bit of a red in there. So it's kind of a warmer, uh, warmer complement to Decade. Yeah, it's actually neutral. You know, there's enough balance in there of kind of a cool cocoa with a bit of a warmer fiery red, which is going to make this actually closer to neutral than anything else. Next, we have ribbon and just a beautiful red. This is going to be a cool tone blue based red. Uh, but this one's actually pretty neutral. The lipstick is a little bit cooler in tone than the lip gloss. This is still going to be, it's, it's cool, but it's closer to neutral than it is to an extreme cool shade. And the, the lipstick itself is slightly cooler. You can see more of that blue base. And then we also have Myth. And I'm gonna put this one right here. Look at that beautiful berry. Look at how that kind of, you know, fades out here. You can see you've really got a cool tone berry shade here. There's a little bit of purple, but it's mostly like if you take a, it's like a crushed blackberry essentially. And I think it is absolutely stunning. One of the best shades. Next up for comparisons, Clay de Poe has just redone their Cream Rouge lip products. So they have a shine formula, which is more like this, but they are a little bit more of a liquid lipstick versus a lip gloss. They also have their matte version, again, more of like a creamy liquid lipstick. And then they introduce a new finish as well. And this is the sparkle finish. And this, although again, it's a liquid lipstick, it is more similar to a gloss. So I did want to compare these in particular. So this one here is 303 Magnia Magnifica or Magnifica. I'm not sure how to say that. Uh, so this is the wand. Now on each of their different formulas, they do have a different wand. This is not the one that I personally have as a favorite applicator. I'll show you that in a minute. But let's go ahead and compare this. I'm gonna put this one right underneath uh, the Dancing Rose. So you can kind of see the difference in the tone here. And actually, let me put a little bit more. We'll put it right here so you can see that. So here is the Clay de Poe versus Dancing Rose. You can see that the Clay de Poe is going to have a higher concentration of sparkle. It's more shimmery. We do have a similar tones in there. Uh, you know, I would have to say that the sparkles in there are about the same in each, like the colors. However, we just have a higher concentration of it in the clay de pose. So it, you, you just see a little bit more and you notice a bit more of that soft pink. So this one here is 303. This one here is 302 Makara. And I wanted to compare this one in particular to Silent Sun. You can see again, this is gonna be more golden, higher concentration again. These are not gonna have as high of a shine finish as the Lisa Eldridge glosses, just because you don't have as much of that like translucent gloss to it. However, you're gonna get a ton of light reflection from all of the sparkle. Just for completion's sake, let's go ahead and swatch the other two Clay de Poe ones. This one's my favorite. This one is 301 Sweet Nectar. You can see this is gonna be white with kind of those opalescent pigments there. It has like a blue and a pink reflect. And then we also have a deeper pink, which is going to be 304 Ohia. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Lahua. I think I said it better before, but when I did the Clay de Poe video, I looked up pronunciations and now I can't remember. So you can see this is going to be like a warm pink, pretty, uh, you know, a lot more concentrated overall. And again, these are technically a liquid lipstick, but they do perform more like a gloss. So preferences, you know, I think this is going to be a personal preference, whether you're looking for just a tiny, tiny bit of sparkle. Again, I have the dancing rose on top of sorcery here. So you get like a little bit of light reflection, or if you want a little bit more of that, then the clay de Poe is a better option. In that case, this is also going to be a slightly thinner formula overall, like it's a lighter weight texture compared to the Lisa Eldridge glosses, which again are more of a medium textured gloss. Now, just to show you the difference with the liquid lipsticks from Clay de Pau, this is one of the Cream Rouge mattes in 119. And again, you can see we've got a different wand here, but I just wanna show you um, pigmentation level, how this is, again, 
uh, it's going to be a little bit more pigmented. It's, you know, with glosses, you can see that where you have it piled up, you know, that's likely to move, but that's where you're getting the deepest color. These are going to be a little bit more pigmented and a thinner texture. So that's 119 in the clay to pot matte. Let me just show you one of the shines. This is one of the shines, 206 Caliandra. And look at this wand. So this is like the lip gloss wand that I really like. I'll show you that though in a second. But here's Caliandra. So you can see that the way the, the pigment's just a little bit smoother in a liquid lipstick compared to a gloss. That's just the nature of the products. Um, but just something to note. So again, we're looking at a thinner texture here. You're looking at more pigment uh, deposits on the lips per se. And the last comparison, this is one of the Dior Lip Maximizers. They come in other colors, but this is the one I have in a sparkle finish. This is 003, this is the lavender one. I just wanted to show you how this gloss compares here. And well, let's, I guess we'll put it right here. So here's 003. So again, you can see it's gonna have more of a translucent base. We've got kind of like a purple and blue kind of shimmer to it. It's actually just a very, very pale. It's not, comp it's a translucent lavender base, so not translucent clear. And uh, yeah, really beautiful. The amount of sparkle in these Dior Lip Maximizers is kind of in between the Lisa Eldridge and the clay de peau, the clay de peau is still gonna be more concentrated, but the Dior Lip Maximizer, I'd say is kind of a little bit closer to clay de peau in concentration of sparkle versus the Lisa Eldridge, which is definitely more subtle. And I just wanted to show you one of the clay de peau lip glosses. This is my wand that I absolutely love. Notice the curvature here. It really just helps you put on just a little bit or a lot of product. And this one here is the shade three charm and you can see that the actual clay de peau glosses again we've got a similar texture to the lisa eldridge glosses this is actually still going to be a little bit lighter weight and texture compared to the lisa eldridge um but you know you can just kind of see how the texture applies in comparison to a liquid lipstick uh you can see like the pigmentation smoothness and so forth so i hope this was helpful and i do have a video with all of the other lisa eldridge shades that we used as comparison so i'll leave that linked down below in the description box check that out if you're interested in any of those shades i think these are a great lip lip gloss you know, I think it's really hard to find something that's vegan and fragrance free that works well and does not expire in just a few months or go bad. And these Lisa Eldridge lip glosses, they really perform well. They've got a great range of colors. I love that they are fragrance free. They're comfortable on the lips. They are a little bit more emollient than some lip glosses, but again, they're not sticky. So that's one of the reasons for that. There's just a little bit more movement on the lips. I think overall they're a really great option and they are priced very fairly. So I wouldn't hesitate to pick them up. Obviously I have all of them. So I always end up picking up her lip glosses and I really hope this was helpful. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you very soon. So have a wonderful day and please enjoy.